Hey, what's up everybody? Space Mike here. And today I wanted to talk about how NASA is building a deployable launch system to maximize Kennedy Space Center usage. And meanwhile, Roscosmos has made an announcement as to why their most recent robotic spacecraft failed. For this, your space pod for May 14th, 2014. As NASA's Kennedy Space Center is preparing to accommodate multiple space vehicles and rockets, its two largest launch pads, Space Launch Complex 39A and 39B, are being prepared for specific rockets. Pad 39A is being prepared for SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, whereas 39B is being prepared for the Space Launch System. However, work is being done on 39B to allow small launchers to utilize the pad as well. The way they are planning to do that is with a mobile deployable pad system known as the Deployable Launch System, aka the launch pad in a box. It would support small class rockets with thrust less than 200,000 pounds of thrust, with the infrastructure needed including a launch mount, a flame deflector, and a propellant servicing system. The Universal Propellant Servicing System would be able to use liquid oxygen and liquid methane primarily, with the option to also use liquid hydrogen and kerosene, and it could service up to a three-stage rocket. Blue Origin comes to mind as a possible customer, although no non-NASA customers have been announced yet. Construction is expected to be complete in June of this year, and it will be very interesting to see who utilizes the pad. Anyway, Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, has made a statement regarding the recent failure of the Progress 27M robotic resupply ship, stating that the failure was caused by a bad separation between the Progress vehicle and the third stage of its Soyuz 2-1A booster. An investigation is still ongoing, and why this problem occurred is not yet completely understood. But at least identifying the rocket as the culprit, Roscosmos and NASA can begin to adjust the flight schedule to the International Space Station. Possible changes that may happen to the space station flight schedule is that the Expedition 42-43 crew of Terry Vertz, Anton Skeplerov, and Samantha Kristoforetti may stay an extra month at the station before departing, thus impacting the launch of Expedition 44-45 crew of Chell Lindgren, Kamiya Yui, and Oleg Koninenko, which was supposed to have launched this month in May, and what they're looking at now is possibly launching that in late July. Russia is also planning on launching another Progress vehicle in early July, but this time on a Soyuz-U rocket instead of the Soyuz-2-1A rocket. And hopefully there won't be any problems with that rocket, and hopefully there won't be more problems with the Soyuz antenna. Yes, I know I say that funny, that's just my Arizona accent coming out, I apologize. <laughs> Anyway, hopefully that progress mission will launch without failure, but also the seventh commercial resupply services mission from SpaceX, which is scheduled for no earlier than June 19th, may also be pushed back as well. On a related note, singer Sarah Brightman has pulled out of her tourist flight to the International Space Station for family reasons. That trip would have launched in September and may still launch with Brightman's backup, a Japanese advertising executive named Satoshi Takamatsu, although that hasn't been confirmed or announced just yet. So anyway, we'll try to keep you guys updated on all the new launch dates for all these different vehicles visiting the space station. And I wish everyone at Roscosmos luck who's going to be involved with finding out why this problem occurred with the Progress 27M. Hopefully they'll be able to solve those problems and the Soyuz 2-1A rocket will be flying again very soon. I'd love to know what you guys think about all these schedule updates for the International Space Station. And for those of you who speak rocket science, I would be very interested in having a conversation about what possible rockets could fly from NASA's deployable launch pad that they're, that they're building right now. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, and if you're interested in helping us to bring you space news like this, then please visit patreon.com slash spacepod to find out how you can become a citizen of tomorrow and crowdfund this show. Thank you very much to everyone who has supported us so far, and hopefully we'll be able to do lots of really cool things in the future. Thank you again for watching. Keep moving onwards and upwards, and I will see you guys next time.